Okay, so it's uh, Wednesday, uh, like 11 o'clock in the morning Pacific time. The weather is beautiful. It's like probably 70 degrees outside, no humidity. The air is so clear and fresh, you know? <laughs> um, I'm in Fortuna, California, which is uh, kind of like Northern California area, a little ways off the coast. Um, first thing I'm actually going to do today is go back to the Avenue of Giants, uh, the place I was in last night, because I want to see it with the sun up like the way it is right now. And I want to get a souvenir because uh, I love that place so much. I want to go back there and buy something from one of the visitor shops or gift shops or whatever. Um, and then from there, I'm heading up into Oregon where I'm going to go to, uh, depending on how late it is, I'm either going to go straight to Crater Lake or I'll stop at the hotel and then do some other stuff and then go see Crater Lake in the morning. Or maybe I'll go see it both at night and in the morning. Um, but uh, I'll see you later. Bye. So I came back to the Avenue of the Giants, uh, not all the way back in, but a good 20 or 30 minutes back from my hotel because I wanted souvenirs. I got a keychain and a shot glass and a t-shirt just because this place is so awesome, you know? Um, I met some more nice people. Uh, I took a picture in front of this immortal tree. It says that it's between 950 and 1,000 years old. Uh, at one point it was 300 feet tall. It survived lightning, axes, forest fires, and floods. Um, its uh, trunk diameter is almost 15 feet. And it has enough volume of wood to build several homes. It's crazy. Um, so I'm about to get back on the road and start heading north again. Uh, find some place to eat because I'm pretty hungry. I also need to gas up. I'm running low. Um, See you guys on the road. So I pulled off at this place where there might be like these wild elk to see and I really want to stop and see if I can catch a glimpse of them. So I'm going to wander down this trail and uh, see if there's anything there. If not, hey, at least it'll be a cool hike, right? <laughs> um, met these other bikers. They're from Vancouver. Pretty cool people. They're giving me advice on what to see while I'm out here. Telling about what the elk in Vancouver look like. Here we go. <laughs> 
scope out this trip. This looks ominous. I like it. <laughs> this looks like the place in the movie where you'd be yelling at somebody to not go there. Do you know me? I always do the opposite of what I'm supposed to do. so cool here like honestly like I'm wearing a sweater I had to stop and buy one uh, earlier because it's it's so cold well not cold but it's just so much colder here than uh, than I expected it to be you know like back home what it's like I think it's like three or four o'clock right now so let's find out what time it is it's four o'clock right now back home four o'clock um, it's probably like in the I don't know 90s still I mean it probably stays in the 90s all night back home right now but here like the temperature changes all day long and right now it can't be more than like 80 degrees and the air is so thin up here that when you're on the freeway it goes right through everything, just like in the winter time back home. So I was freezing, I was shivering earlier. <laughs> I had to pull off and just buy a sweater because I was so uncomfortable. My nose is running on the road and stuff right now. It's really, uh, it's really not, not really the best <laughs> situation. gonna see the Davison Trail and the Barry Glen Trail and the Lost Man Creek Trail apparently. Look at this bridge. It does not look like a safe bridge. I don't think Mexicans made that bridge. Sun. <laughs> well, there were no elk down there. But that's okay, it was a nice walk. I met some really nice people from Vancouver. Uh, I'm about to get back on the road and uh, see what there is next to see. Bye, it was really nice to meet you. You too, ride safe, hey? I will, you too. Will you make it to your medical school? Absolutely, I promise I will. <laughs> you guys have a good day and a good vacation. All right, I'm in another Redwood Grove. I just I can't resist these trees. They're so beautiful, and these are so big. Look at I want look at this over here. Let's see if I can get this in the. I mean, this one's pretty impressive too. But uh, over there, that's what I pulled off the road for. Look at that thing. That is a giant. 
That is a giant. I don't know how to get over there though. So I'm gonna work my way towards it. Oh man. Just walk through another spider web. <laughs> every day for an hour or two. I bet you would live longer. <laughs> Get this thing, man. Just a giant, one giant tree. Whoa, look at that. Well, I'm gonna get a picture in front of this tree. All right, we got that picture. <laughs> Still just kind of hiking around. Look at this next piece. to get up there into that tree I'm gonna try to get a picture of myself up there all right so I'm either gonna fall off down there and break my neck or I'm gonna get an awesome picture we'll see Whew. well I did it <laughs> There's pictures of me climbing this tree and almost killing myself. Ugh. See, I we are here, the ground, and I went up there in between those big branches, big trunks. That was fun. <laughs> I just love it out here. I guess it's time to move on. I need to start making some real progress towards the hotel. I think I'm still a couple hours away. And I'd like to go see a piece of tree disintegrate under my foot. I'd like to see Crater Lake today as well as tomorrow. So I don't think there's time for that now. It's already like going to be 6, I think. Or something similar. What time is it going to be? I'm at 4.48. So I don't have any service out here, but... When I get cell phone service again, I'll figure out how far away I am and see if I have time for any more sightseeing before that. Also, still have to find my bike. Ugh.
think this is about where I left my blanket. Hopefully. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, do we have a motorcycle? And yeah, we do. Great, that's totally where I left my bike at. <sighs> All right, well, we're gonna get back on the road. Peace out, guys. Oh, you're good. I think this is the first time I've ever been to a beach where it was cold outside. <laughs> um, I'm still in Northern California. Uh, I just came out of another redwood forest, climbed a giant redwood tree, because why not? <laughs> um, uh, I had to pull over because this beach is so pretty. There's rocks and there's a cloud like on the ground over here. Like you can literally see the cloud, especially the treetops. It's awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna walk down to the beach, you know, soak in the waves for a little bit and be so late getting to the hotel again, like always. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Peace. I've never seen sand like this. It's like gray. There's big logs everywhere. These birds just do not care who's on their beach. I don't know. This is a totally different kind of beach. You know, this is like rugged. It's not. I mean, it's beautiful, but it's beautiful in a like more real way. If that makes any sense. You know, I feel like beaches in LA were. I don't know, too pretty for their own good, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, they, uh, they just had an air of like picturesque qualities that made them seem like they couldn't be real. And this is like, no, it's not perfect, no, it's not like exactly what you think of when you hear the word beach at least unless you're from here probably but it's so real that it's beautiful i don't know i'm stupid <laughs> look at that i mean i don't know if this plays on the camera but there's clouds touching those rocks you know it's amazing i got my eye on this rock over here that i really want to climb i don't know what happened to me on this trip i became like a monkey <laughs> Um, I'm going out to those rocks. 
would really hurt to fall onto. <laughs> I want to crawl out onto this branch for a picture. I think I'm going to set the camera up down there on the rocks, point it up there and then walk my way out there and pose to the camera. It's really stupid. And if anybody sees me do it, they're going to think, hey, that guy over there is really stupid. But <laughs> I wanted, I climbed a redwood, man. I can walk out on a tree trunk. Maybe. I didn't realize how far I had already walked out on this thing. It's easier here because it's like flat over there. It starts getting rounded. Let's see if I can figure out how to set this up. And I did it. I climbed that thing. It was wobbly. <laughs> I got out there and it started to wobble and I got kind of scared when I stood up because I was sitting at first. And when I stood up, it started kind of wobbling up and down and I was like, oh man. This thing should hold my weight. I don't weigh that much. That was great. It was scary. But it was great. It was, I mean, that fall, that's a good... Well, let's see. That's probably 15, 20 feet up. Onto rocks. <laughs> that is not something you want to have happen to you. I gotta figure out how I gotta cross this again. I'm trying really hard not to get my boots wet. Because I don't want to have water in my boots all day. Maybe I can walk across these rocks right here. Hopefully I don't slip. That'd be funny though. Ta-da! <laughs> Man, I've already almost killed one battery on the GoPro. I have a second one, so I'll go swap them out right now, but that went fast. Well, I guess not. Let's see. I left the hotel at 11. That's about to be six, so seven hours on one battery. I guess that's not bad. I have been using it a lot today. Hiking and climbing trees. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna get back on the road. See y'all later. Hey guys, I am, well, I came from up here. <laughs> I pulled off the road because I saw a sign that said, uh, I forgot what it said, river access or something. So I jumped down there. Well, I jumped down here from up there because I wanted to come see this river. You can hear it from up there, like the rushing water. There were all these signs that say like hazardous waters, wear a life jacket. I don't even know how to swim. It's not like I'm going in the water. I just wanted to come see it. Oh man, that's cool. Look at that. This is one time I'm not going to go all the way out there. Just because... Well, like I said, I don't know how to swim. I could really die. I mean, I could really die doing most of the things I seem to find myself doing on this trip. But... Any of those other things would be me losing out on something I'm actually kind of okay at, you know? I'm decent at motorcycle riding. I'm decent at keeping my balance. Except for right now. Well, to be fair, I'm climbing down these rocks. <sighs> these boots have been through hell on this trip. <laughs> these boots. 
These are working boots. It's pretty up there. It's the sun. I mean, you could just stay out here forever just listening to the water, reading a book or something, you know? <laughs> that would be so peaceful. see those rapids over there. Is that what they're called? Rapids? It's all like white and frothy over there. And it looks cool. But there are a lot of rocks between me and there. <laughs> Do you imagine falling down out here? You would hurt yourself so bad. Oh, <laughs> I almost really did fall down that time. Oh. I should bring back one of these rocks. It's a souvenir. Looking at the rocks, I wasn't even paying attention to how close I was to the water. Something that's been really great about this trip is I've been able to actually indulge the exploratory nature. That I have, you know? It's one of the reasons I always loved research. Because I love finding things, new things. <laughs> you know, and this whole trip is just like, hey, that sounds interesting. Let's go look at that. You know? Oh man, this is cool. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna take some pictures. I'll see you guys when I head back to the bike. Alright. I got my pictures. Now I gotta try to get back to my bike. Honestly, I don't even remember. I mean, it all looks the same. I don't really remember where I started at. I know the road is that way, so I mean, I'll find it. I just, it's... it's a matter of getting there. Whoa, that was a loose rock. All right, I know I started on sand. So I must be in more or less the right place. <laughs> I know I started looking at that cluster of rocks over there. Ooh, you can slide down the sand a little bit. <sighs> it's probably somewhere around here. Let's see. Pretty flowers. This looks about right. Yeah, I remember this. I need to look up what river this is <laughs> so I can say where I am. Ooh. There's my baby. Sitting there waiting for me.
All right, guys. We are getting back on the road. Next stop. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Peace out. So I took about a 20 mile detour <laughs> because I heard that this road was awesome and uh, it was it's actually a little sad though and scary because the sun is going down right now like literally sun is setting and I'm really high up uh, I don't actually know how high up but pretty high up and the road I took was really skinny and narrow full of twists and turns and I'm about to have to go back down that those 20 miles uh, in the dark. <laughs> so that's going to be scary and exhilarating and dangerous. Man, look at that. I'm watching the sunset. I wish I could actually see the sun from here. The trees and hills or whatever are kind of in the way, but it's still a beautiful view. It's still so quiet, everything. Oh, I'm in Oregon now, by the way. <laughs> I think last time I talked to you guys, I was still in California. You know the gas stations here? They still have people to like pump gas. They didn't pump my gas, but like, I saw a bunch of people get their gas pumped by others, which is weird. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna start making my way back down this mountain uh, and hopefully not die. I'll take a little bit more video on the way down and uh, hopefully my next stop is the hotel because I hate riding in the dark. It's always so cold up here in the dark. Peace.
Hello everybody, um, today is the 31st, jeez, yeah, Thursday, July 31st, it is 7.30 in the morning in Medford, Oregon, which <laughs> is a really small town with a really cool downtown district actually, uh, I enjoyed my night here, I really did, everybody was super nice. Um, waitress at the restaurant had like a whole conversation with me. Dude at the front desk at the hotel had a whole conversation with me. Everybody was really talkative and really nice. And the hotel was so cheap. Uh, this room was only 40 bucks. And it's clean. It's comfortable. There's free Wi-Fi. You know, bed was comfortable. Like, it's better than some of the 70 and $80 rooms I've had along the way. Um, and I don't know. That's That's kind of part of what has, well, you know what? We'll get to that later. Let's talk about yesterday. Yesterday was awesome. Yesterday I woke up in Fortuna, California, which is like in Northern Cali, and I decided I wanted to go back to the Avenue of Giants because I loved it so much, but I was there so late in the day that I had to get out while sunlight was going down and stuff, and the visitor shops and things were closed already. So I went back uh, early in the morning when I left my hotel um, to go see some of the more touristy parts because all I was doing was riding the road and pulling off and like hiking into random redwood groves. Um, so I pulled off into one of the touristy sites and um, I uh, bought some souvenirs <laughs> and um, I uh, I got to meet some more people. Uh, they were really nice to me. They gave me some advice for the ride up north about what kind of roads to check out and stuff like that. Um, then I started heading up to, uh, well, to this hotel was really my destination for the day because I, I needed a place close to Crater Lake so that in the morning I could get a good start and head to it. So that's what I'm going to be doing in a minute. Once I get off of this video, uh, I'm just going to shower and head straight to Crater Lake. I won't be posting any more videos, at least not until... I might put one up tonight, but I doubt it. Um, so today is the last day of my trip, as at, at least as far as like heading somewhere that isn't home. You know, uh, Crater Lake is where I'm gonna stop. I had originally thought I might go further north into Portland and Seattle, but I mean, my flight is in seven days, and it's gonna take me three or four days to get home, which means there are very few days left to see anybody before I leave. And I really enjoyed the peace and quiet of being alone, but I definitely need to spend some time seeing everybody, you know? Um, the light is glaring off of my glasses. That's why I never wear them when I'm doing these. Um, you know, there are definitely people I want to see back home before I leave. And so I'm going to be heading back. Tonight I'm actually going to be sleeping back in San Francisco, or just a little bit south of San Francisco. Uh, and then the next night will be San Diego, then El Paso, then home. So uh, today's Thursday. Thursday is San Francisco. Friday is San Diego. Saturday is El Paso, and Sunday is home. At, at least that's the plan right now. You know, my plans never seem to work out travel-wise. <laughs> I get distracted. Although that last bit from San Diego home... I'm not going to get distracted because there's nothing to see. <laughs> no offense to people that live in Arizona and Santa Fe and West Texas, but I found those places to be incredibly boring, especially compared to California and Oregon. Um, so um, last night the destination was this place, but uh, I pulled off a ton of times yesterday. I just kept seeing, <sighs> excuse me. I just kept seeing beautiful things that I wanted to go look at and just stare at for a while and listen to the water hit the rocks and listen to the silence in the trees and you know it was it was great it was so great um, it was exhausting I did a lot of hiking yesterday uh, my feet are a little sore which is this is actually the first time this whole trip that my feet have been sore um, motorcycle boots aren't really designed for hiking uh, they're really rigid up about halfway up your calf, you know, so it's really hard to to step on stuff naturally, but they are really good for protecting your ankles. <laughs> um, and when I got to 
when I got into Oregon, I just saw this random sign that said like Oregon Caves National Monument. And there was an arrow. So I was like, oh, let's go see that. It was already like 8 o'clock at night and the sun was going down pretty quick. But I was like, eh, it can't be that far because there was a visitor center right there. Then I saw another sign that said like it's 18 miles away. And so I decided not to go all the way to the caves just because I didn't have time for that. Um, but I did go up this mountain road that takes you to the cave resort thing. They have like a lodge up there. And I rode all the way to the lodge. And that mountain road was amazing. I That's the first time I've been on one. Hopefully I'll be on one today too um, in at Crater Lake. But that was it was just like it was narrow and windy and there were blind turns and there were turns where you're like making almost a U-turn around a road that has no guardrail and there's just a cliff on one side where if you go off it you're probably gonna die especially if you go off it on a motorcycle <laughs> um and it was exhilarating it was a rush and i loved it uh i i almost wrecked there was one time it'll be in the video probably uh whenever i get around to putting the rest of these videos together um, there was one time where I definitely almost wrecked. I thought I was going to. I started hitting the brakes. I started leaning and I got the feeling I get in my chest and in the bottom of my stomach that's like, oh, that's it. We're going to hit something. And then I just, I managed to pull out of it, you know, and I don't know how. I really don't. I thought I was, I thought I was going to hit this. I wasn't going off the edge. I was going to go into the cliff wall. The other side was a cliff wall. I was going to go into the cliff wall. Um, and somehow I managed to avoid it. Uh. And after that, I slowed down. <laughs> um, no speeding tickets yesterday, so that was a plus. Uh, I got here, I unpacked, I went out to go find dinner. It was already like 11 when I got here at night. So I found this 24-hour diner. Had like steak and shrimp, and they had this stuff, these stuffed hash browns that were delicious. I don't even know what was in them, but they were delicious. And... Uh, some really good wheat beer. Um, and that was my day. You know, the, I guess more of it was documented before this part of the video, right? Because I usually stop and talk a lot. So the rest of it is there, I'm sure. I, I barely remember a lot of the early parts of the day. <laughs> it was such a long day. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's talk about... Let's talk about what uh, I thought about yesterday. I started thinking a lot about like, I don't know, maybe being alone and being in the quiet and all that helped me admit some things to myself that I may not necessarily like, but that I need to acknowledge and move forward from. And uh, I think part of this trip was me running away from things, you know. Um, I have this problem with, like, attachment to people. I know, I know that I have it, and I know where it comes from. You know, when I was 14 and left home, uh, by the time I left for good, I had to leave without even saying bye to anybody. You know, I just... I went to school one day and I never came back and I never spoke to anybody. I didn't tell anybody where I went or what I was doing or anything. I was just gone. So from one day to the next, every single person I knew in my life was gone. You know, I had no more friends. <sighs> Excuse me. I had no more friends. I had no more anything, you know, like. And that hurt really bad. Um, and ever since then, I've had a really hard time getting close to people because, I don't know, I guess I'm always scared of losing them. And then the few times I have gotten close to people, I've ended up losing them again. And... It hurts. It hurts so bad. And I, I mean, maybe it hurts everybody. But I just, I, I hate that pain. And I don't, I don't handle it well at all. Like, I'm not one of those people that can just shake it off and move on. I pretend like I am. 
I bet if any of you were, well, a couple of you know differently, but I bet most of you would assume I'm that kind of person. But I'm really not. I just, I just pretend to be. And, you know, that's a, that's like an armor that I wear. This, like, guy that doesn't care and does whatever he wants and all that kind of stuff. But in truth, I am very strongly affected by the people around me and the absence of people around me. You know, when certain situations happened last year, I went through really deep depression, you know? And I went through that depression alone because at school and at work and stuff, I was still just pretending to be fine, pretending to be the guy that doesn't care. And I'm going through something similar now, you know, I'm not, I'm not going through depression right now, but I'm going through like this time of my life where I don't feel good when I think about the things that are changing. I'm so excited to go to NYU. Like I really am. I, I, I think it's the right decision. Uh, and I can't wait to start. But at the same time, like, a really big part of me just wishes that my life had gone in a different direction. And when I think about that possibility, that opportunity that I missed out on, it hurts in a way that that I can't, I just can't stomach it anymore. You know, it's like, it keeps me from being able to sleep or eat or think. I, I just like lay there paralyzed by this feeling in my stomach, you know, of dread and anger and sadness and resentment. And when you're on a motorcycle, you don't think about those things. When you're looking at beautiful nature, you don't think about those things. You know, all I have is my music and my podcasts and my audiobooks. And the throttle and the brake and the engine noise and the wind, the bikers I come across, the tourists I come across. That's my whole life right now. It's really simple and it's really enjoyable. And uh, I think part of me needing to just leave on this trip was that like, I knew I couldn't handle another three weeks at home. Well, not at home, but and I couldn't handle another three weeks just sitting around in a house mulling over things that I dislike about my life. And I also feel guilty for that because I know that there are a lot of people that would kill to be in the position I'm in. There are a lot of my friends would love to be where I am right now and would do anything to, to be where I am right now. And all I want is the normal stuff that they have, you know, healthy relationships with people. <laughs> Um, peace and, you know, fun and all of these kinds of things that I'm always pursuing but never quite finding. You know, that's why I'm such a thrill seeker. I'm always looking for that thing that makes me feel good and I can never find it. You know, motorcycling goes a long way. And these last couple of days in the redwoods and in these windy roads, I've, I've felt better like even more so than when i was down in san diego and la and just looking at the beaches up here honestly i feel even more at home i think in a way it makes me lament that i'm moving to manhattan you know if i had taken this trip a year ago i might have picked st louis or you know some other school that has access to like really good hiking and, and motorcycle roads and stuff but you know I'm still going to love Manhattan, right? Anyway, I got off on a tangent. I got off on like four tangents right now. What I was saying is that I've acknowledged that I was running away from problems that I didn't want to deal with. But sometimes I think that's okay. Um, sometimes I think you have to just be honest with yourself and tell yourself that you're going to do the best you can with what you got. You know, like there are some things I'm really good at. I'm really good at studying. I'm really good at test taking. I'm really good at acting. I'm really good at, you know, uh, leading and making decisions. I'm really good at thinking quickly. I am not good at some other things, though. I am not good at dealing with people. I'm not good at 
expressing myself honestly. I'm not good at, you know, taking care of the people around me in all the ways I need to be taken care of. And that leads to there being very few people around me. <laughs> um, but, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a good actor. And I'll keep acting like I'm good at it until I get good at it, you know. Uh, you need a lot of interpersonal skills as a physician. And I have interpersonal skills. It's just like, it's just like everything is so... Everything about myself, I feel like, is so crafted. Like, I have to always think about the way I walk and the way I talk and the things I tell people that I've done and the things I don't tell people that I've done. And I guess I don't have to do that, but I feel like I do, you know? And so that's something I'm going to try to get away from. I'm going to try to be a lot more honest with myself and with people. Um... Anyway, today is Crater Lake, so I'm about to go jump in the shower. I've been unpacking and repacking my bag every day because every day I pick up a few new things. Like yesterday I had to stop and buy a sweater because it's cold up here. Colder than I would have expected at least, especially along the coast. It's pretty. I met some bikers from ba Vancouver yesterday and even they said like at night up here it's colder than we expected too. <laughs> um, So I'm going to have to unpack and repack. I'll probably get out of here in about an hour. It takes an hour to get to Crater Lake. So if it's it's 8 o'clock right now, hopefully I'll be at Crater Lake by 10. Uh, and I can spend a good 3, 4, 5 hours exploring that area. And then I'm going to have to head back because uh, I'm sleeping in San Francisco tonight. And San Francisco is about 7 hours away from there. So if I leave by 2 or 3 in the afternoon... Hopefully I'll get there at a reasonable time, uh, enough time to shower and eat and you know crash out. Then in the morning I'm gonna head down to San Diego, just crash there for a night, and get out of there. And I'm gonna head to El Paso, crash there for a night, get out of there. Then I'll be back in Texas, and I'll be back home. That'll be that. And then there'll be a couple of days left where I'll say hi to everybody, and then I'm getting on a plane. Going to New York. Who knows when I'm coming back. Alright guys. Make sure to show everybody and everything you come across. Love. Peace out.